Welcome. In this lesson, we are going to look at how to pull from production to staging to local development. This process is going to be most helpful when you want to work on a new feature to a site and you want to make sure that you have the latest version of the site to work with. So just to repeat for the process of going from production to staging, we're going to be relying on the hosting provider and to go from staging to local, we're going to be using a plugin. So here's what I have to start. I have a live production website that has its own URL and this is what it looks like. It's got a home page and an about page. It's using the 2016 theme with a black background. Then I have my local WordPress development site. Notice the .dev at the end and it looks a little bit different. It has the 2017 theme and its only content is home which is listing posts and a sample page. So I definitely have to get my local environment up to date so I could work on this site. Now I don't have any staging set up, so we'll look at that together as the first step. So for this hosting environment that I'm working with, again, it's using Bluehost and I'm inside the staging area. And with this hosting provider, you could set up staging right from within your WordPress site. Depending on what hosting provider you use, this may be something that's done through cPanel or a proprietary hosting admin interface, but whatever you have, you should have something that says create staging site or something similar. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Once we click to set up, it's going to begin setting up the new staging environment, which involves the process of setting up a new directory, installing WordPress, and transferring over everything from your production site into staging. It also does one other really important thing, which is changes the URL references in the database for your actual site. This will allow you to click through your site even though the URL for your staging site will be different than your production site and everything will still work. So this process may take a few moments, but once it's done, you should get a few things like your staging URI, which is going to be the URL for your site. In this case, it's our site slash staging slash 6408. Now anybody could view this at the moment, but you can go into that site and go ahead and set up a password protected plugin or something like that to keep people out. If you want to do that, then just share it with the people who need to preview it. And the great thing is, is that your login information is going to be the same on that site as it is for production. So you don't have to worry about that. We also see the staging directory. So this is going to be the file path. If you were ever to command line into your server or use SFTP in your public HTML folder, you would find a staging folder with this particular staging site set up in there. And then WordPress is installed in that. So if you ever needed to access the files for it, you could access your server and go in there. This is also important to point out that our staging environment is actually in the same hosting setup as our regular site. Now, some servers and some staging environments may do this differently. You may have a staging environment that is a completely different FTP or command line login from your public site. So depending on what setup you have, it may be a little bit different, but very often it's the case where these are in the same environment. So then we see the ability to go to staging. So I'm going to do that now and notice what happens when I do. First of all, the thing we notice is staging environment. You should hopefully see some sort of notice that you're on your staging site to really let you know that this isn't your live production site. You could also tell from the URL. Notice our main site is 975websites.com and we would access that by going to that site slash wp-admin. In this case, we're inside staging and we could actually still view both of these. So here's my normal site, my production site. It hasn't changed. I could still access the admin area by going to the same URL. But if I come into staging now inside of this folder here, this is where my WP admin is. So the main URL for my staging site is going to be this, but notice the file paths and everything work the same. And this is what I meant by behind the scenes, it does some URL changing. But this is just to point out the important fact that both your production site and staging site will both be quote unquote live. And you, like I said, you may want to password protect this one but there should be some indicator that you are on your staging environment so you don't accidentally mess up the wrong site. Okay, so now that we have staging set up and it's a duplicate of production, let's do the next step, which is go ahead and install the plugin that we need. And if I search here for migration, I'm going to install the all-in-one WP migration, activate that, and then come down into all-in-one WP migration export. 
Now, what we're going to do here basically on this page is download a full copy of our site that includes all the files and the database. But when we do this, it's very important that we take the database record for everything pertaining to our production URL and we change that to match our local development setup. So this happens automatically in staging for us, so we don't have to worry about it when we pull from production to staging, but when we go from staging into local development, we do have to worry about this. Now, as I mentioned, there are different tools and different ways to do this, but in this particular one, the important step is that you copy the URL of your staging site and then the URL of your local development site. And make sure that if you have a trailing slash on one, you have a trailing slash on the other. I am removing them both in this case. So once we do that, we are going to export a file, which will give us a zipped file, depending on how big the site is. It may take a few moments. But once we have that zipped file, we could download it and import it into our local development. Okay, so now I'm in my local development setup. I'm going to go to plugins, add new, and install the same plugin. So this is important. We want the same WP all-in-one migration plugin on our staging and on our local development setup. The reason for this is that not only can this plugin export our site entirely, but it could also import that file and update itself entirely to match our staging setup. So once we have the plugin set up, we're now actually going to come into import and we're going to import the file that we exported from our staging site. So this is going to basically take the database and the files and replace everything in our WordPress local development. Now, here's the important notice and it's a good thing that they show this here. This is telling you, you are going to overwrite your entire website here, all the database, the media, the plugins, the themes, everything. So you might want to make sure that you have a backup first. Now in this case, we're not worried about it because what we're really after is getting that live site on our local development. But if you have some local development stuff, maybe you've been tinkering with the theme or you've been adding some important pages that need to go live, you probably don't want to proceed in this way. So then you might have to do some more manual reproduction of content or something like that. So again, this process really just works when you're trying to get the production site down into local development, which is fairly common. So let's go ahead and proceed. Notice that it's telling us not to close this window or your import will fail, that's important. So we're just gonna let this run out and complete. Okay, so once this is done, we have one important other step. We need to go into permalinks settings and simply click save. Now this is sort of kind of a weird bug with WordPress and how the saving of, of permalinks affects certain things that we're really not even gonna bother going into at all in the, in the whole depth of this course as much as we'll talk about WordPress development. But it's just important to know that this is a step that can make sure that your URLs all work properly. Because as I mentioned, remember we changed some URL paths and links and things like that during the export process. So if we simply click on this permalink settings, it's going to open up this new tab. You may have to log in again and then you're going to come into settings, permalinks, and unless anything needs to be changed, this should be correct here, you're just gonna click save changes. So like I said, it isn't some major thing that we have to customize, we just make sure we save it. Now notice some other things. If I come and view the front end of the site, notice how it looks just like my production. So if I come into production, notice the URL here, everything looks like this. Before it was a different theme, as well as a different navigation and content. So now we can truly see that we have pulled down our production site into staging, into our local development, and now we can make whatever changes it is we need to make. So we will do that in the next lesson. However, before you proceed to there, make sure that you have tried out this workflow. It may take you a few tries to get everything just right, and just know that you may have to delete your staging environment or you may have to delete your local environment, so don't use a setup that you're too worried about, but you should be fine with your production site. Nothing that we're gonna do in this process of pulling from production into staging and staging down into local development should hurt your production site. Again, you'll just create staging. That'll automatically pull from production. You used a plugin to pull down from staging into your local environment, and that concludes this entire process here. As I mentioned, in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and make some changes in our local development and begin pushing them back up the process 
to see how that goes. So whether you need to set up a new side project site or you have a good production site that you don't mind pulling down into your local environment, you could go ahead and play with that process there. So go ahead and try this out and then we'll see you in the next lesson where we take it to the next level and begin pushing the changes back up.